Alrighty. We've got the wood heater going. Um, it's sort of a bit of an overcast-ish day. It's you know, trying to <laughs> trying to get a bit brighter, you might see out there, but it's really not. Probably going to be much more than overcast. Um, yeah, I'm in here banging away again. Um, some of you may remember that I uh, experimented with some boxer shorts using some fabric that is years old, probably 15 years old, that somebody else bought uh, and never used. Um, and uh, I was in a bit of a rush and I uh, didn't have a very clear table so I didn't cut the boxer shorts very well and I didn't really do it exactly how my idea had uh, played out because I was trying to rush it because I had to go to work the next day and I didn't hem the bottom of them or do jack shit. So anyway, long story short, um, it's just me phone there, I've been playing a bit of music. Long story short, uh, I got a bunch of cheap acetate, which is like, um, it's basically like in a suit lining. It's basically, it's not satin, uh, polyester satin. Uh, this is the white pair that uh, I made before. I've got those on at the moment. Um, but they're full thickness. Most boxer shorts are full thickness, uh, and most of these things are polyester satin. But this stuff here is like a half thickness, and it seems like a polyester satin, but it's actually acetate, uh, which is, I believe, a slightly cheaper fabric. But but that was on the discount, and needless to say, I bought it. Um, and so I've gone ahead and uh, still got to put the elastic in. I butchered the other old pair that I made that I didn't hem the bottom of that weren't even bloody parallel the whole way around. <laughs> they were a bit of a mess and uh, weren't well made, but I butchered the elastic out of them. And I've still got to put the elastic in those. But it's those are based on the concept that I originally had that I you know, went ahead and done properly this time as opposed to doing a rush and I've done it fully to the theory I had. Um, although I haven't put the elastic in, I have tried them on, and holy smoke, they are fantastic. What shocks me about boxer shorts, for instance, is <laughs> the fact that I'm trying all this for the first time, and I'm making stuff that is, you know, I make a few mistakes, but most of what I made is better than what you can buy in the bloody shops. And for some dude pissing around with a $20 sewing machine with no real training, it's fairly shocking <laughs> to be able to do that. Um, but those have come out uh, shockingly well. Uh, the design type is very, very different um, to how most boxer shorts are, are made. Uh, a lot of them, they... Um, I'll go and show you an official pair. Here's a bit of the fabric I was saying about. Whew. That's an official pair there. Now what they do is they sew the elastic directly on to the fabric and it gives you that rippled look that I think you're seeing now. Um, it's almost like sharing. They Sometimes you see little girls' skirts, they have it in like the top, like just around... Oh, around the bottom of the rib cage or something, they'll put a bunch of sharing in uh, so for some of these little dresses. And uh, But that's the way they do the elastic. The elastic is directly attached. Uh, and now there's about four or five different methods of putting elastic in. These are proper bought ones, as you could tell. They've got a, a whatever it is, friggin' leopard or tiger or some shit. Uh, leopard, I think. Or is it a jaguar? Who knows? <laughs> but anyway, they're proper ones that, uh, you know, are made in... Uh, the country where all the shit's made, basically. Um, and uh, the long and short of it is, there's about five different methods to putting in elastics. Uh, and I'll see if you can, without saying more than you need to see. Now that there, that's my elastic there, that's the hem. The elastic isn't actually attached directly. This is another method they use for oh, lots of different things. In particular, tracksuit pants um, often enough have 
that what it is, you make a giant hem uh, and you just, <laughs> you basically just slide it inside the giant hem. Um, and so all you're really attaching is one end of the elastic to the other end after you've like threaded it through threaded it through, you thread it through uh, using a safety pin. Uh, you put a safety pin on one end, not too close to the edge, um, and you just sort of, you can rub it through. And uh, the long and short of it is that, um, you know, it's attached at one point, uh, you know, it's sewed to each other, but then attached to the pants. Often enough, it's attached to the pants. I think it's almost unavoidable. Um, because as you close it into the hem, you've got to sew the hem together, and as a result, you sew over the elastic. So it'll be attached at one point at least. Some people do it two points, they'll do it four points. I'll just do it at one point. Um, but or sometimes two, because, you know, you sort of got like your front and your back or whatever, and, and some people have, you know, front left, front right, you know, back left, back right, and so they end up attaching it sort of at four points, but it's not actually sewn directly the whole way along, and that's the way I like to do it, and I have found that as a result, you don't have all these ruffled crap against your skin, and it makes for a hell of a lot more comfortable elastics, uh, and, and it's like, Holy smoke, like I'm just some guy pissing around with a $20 fucking sewing machine that I get off eBay, you know, and no real skill, and it's more comfortable than the ones that you're buying in the in the frickin' shops, you know. But uh, this other one, this other pair you can see sitting over there on top of me jumper, uh, I fixed that jumper up, I think I showed you that. I put all the little V pieces in. All of a sudden, the arms open up, and I'm wearing it every day at work. Um, and anyway, with that pair of boxer shorts there, they are very, very different, um, but good different. Uh, you could run those and make all bar two seams. You could make completely automated, like a production line. You could just frickin' spin them off, boom, 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 boom. No person actually sewing except for the last two seams in them uh, and the elastic. Um, but what I'm saying is they are 80% automatable production, you know, potentially, just because of the way they've been designed. I'm not going to go into the design because it is rather different. It is shockingly different. Uh, but I will also say that they give you a bit more support so that there is less swinging in the wind than you would also have with boxer shorts. And just trying them on before, you know, because of no elastics, I had to hold them up. But I could feel that, you know, instead of elastic, uh, instead of normal boxer shorts letting it all swing around, they uh, they held everything in quite well and quite neatly and were rather comfortable, which is um, not usual for for your stretch cotton boxer shorts. That is often the case, that they hold things in well. But for your normal satin ones, which I'm used to wearing, they don't hold much in well at all. It's still just there doing whatever it wants to do uh, without much support. Um, but yeah, those ones, they they are surprisingly comfortable and, uh, <laughs> you know, I think I'm going to go far with with that design and uh, at the rate I'm going with some of these cheap bloody crapo things and seeing how long it took me to put that together, you know, there's, there's one, there's two seams that are rather complicated, um, but the rest of it to put together is a frickin' absolutely kick over, which is why I know that it would be easy to do on some sort of an automated production line, uh, sort of a setup where it's just, you know, continuously fed machines. And uh, I have been seeing some of these American machines that were made that are sort of similar to the uh, Der Derkop Adler German machines that are made in the 90s. Uh, and 
You know, they're like automatic hemming machines with a bloody conveyor belt, and you just sort of drop things on, and they just feed it through, and they put hems on shirts. But, you know, if need be, you could make a similar thing, and it wouldn't be that complicated uh, to do it, um, you know, yourself to convert a machine. Now, there is something that is sort of like that already, that I already have with the old German machine, uh, and it's a foot that's a, a hemming foot, and it usually only works with light fabrics. It doesn't work with big, heavy, frickin' cotton flannel thingy majigglers. It doesn't work with bloody polar fleece, but it will work with satin. Polyester satin and probably acetate as well, especially like your half thickness stuff, like what I'm making those out of. Um, you know, it's designed, they call it a hemming foot, uh, and it's designed to only really take lighter fabrics. Now, you can make things that take heavier fabrics, just takes, uh, <laughs> it takes you a fair bit of time stuffing around as you make this thing using uh, sheet metal and a soldering iron and a lot of bloody bits of heavy wire like bull wire that's galvanized so you can solder onto it and yeah but the uh, long and short of it is that uh, you know some of the production of that is so automatable it would actually use off the shelf hemming foot attached to the machine to do some of the automation in that um, but yeah I'm getting to the point that I might not be buying any more friggin <laughs> made in China from the shop underwear because, you know, I'm sort of at a point where I'm making better stuff than I can buy. And uh, as much as I like experimenting with designs, now that I've hit on a couple of good designs and whatnot, uh, and in some cases, you know, in the case of these white things, they're pretty much copycatted um, design, although one leg's tighter than the other because I... Uh, <laughs> yeah, didn't completely copy it, but tried to uh, sort of do two bits of fabric in uh, as one piece and, and sort of uh, miscalculated. But the long and short of it is that I am doing stuff that is better than what I can buy. And so I probably won't be buying much anymore. And, uh, you know, you go in there and, and what am I paying? Like eight bucks or 12 bucks for a pair of boxer shorts and and honestly, I can get like a whole meter of this stuff, that stuff there. Mm, I think I paid eight bucks a meter or something like that, you know. And uh, yeah, I've also, uh, the elastics in this Chinese stuff is a little bit questionable, but uh, some of the elastics I've got, including the one in this white stuff is, in these white boxer shorts is really, really good uh, because that's the stuff I went and bought in bulk that I've got a great big roll of, and that is absolutely brilliant stuff. It is the sort of stuff that will outlast these crappy, cheap elastics probably five or six times. And, um, yeah, but anyway, I'm sort of surprised at how well I've gone with such little experience uh, versus shop-bought stuff. It's just... There's some things that you would assume that the market is fully blooming taken care of, and then you find out that either I got a bit more of a skill than I suspected I had in one area, or most likely those bastards just ain't putting in a real effort. And, <laughs> you know, they're getting them made, you know, in China because, oh, they're very complicated, but then they still make them shit. And, well, actually, they're not very complicated, but. You know, the idea of a lot of this Chinese labor was to get crazy blooming shirts. I mean, a lot of shirts like the one I've got on, it's not that big a deal to do. You get these business shirts, you see the amount of bullshit they have to go through to do a business shirt. It's just phenomenal. You know, all the little cuffs and the this and the that and the blah, blah, blah. You know, with the good ones where you've got what they call a, a double-sided yoke, uh, which is like your part where you're just above your shoulder blades, they actually make that out of two bits of fabric, you know, and, and you look at this business shirt and there's that many bits of interfacing that are stuck inside, which is like a stiffener thing, inside the collars and the cuffs and the, 
so many bits around where you shot it. You know, they're comfortable, yeah, because they've got about a million bloody parts and a million bloody joints, so they perfectly fit your body. Uh, but in the process, there's that much you've got to do that you've got to get it made in China because if you had it made anywhere else, you'd just die on labour costs because there's so much sewing and so many individual little parts that are all got to be joined together. Boom, boom, boom. And it's just a, a nightmare sort of thing. But you'd assume that they could do a really good job on something like boxer shorts, which, you know, <laughs> that's a, sort of like half the cost of a shirt with jack shit worth of bugger all the amount of seams comparative to a shirt. It's not like half the price, half the seams. It's, you know, there's dramatically different change in the amount of, you know, seams and the lack of complexity. Uh, and then they still come out with stuff that some idiot with a $20 eBay sewing machine and, and no formal training and a couple of months playing around can can beat. It's not supposed to be like that. Not in my experience of, uh, you know, free enterprise markets. But, but anyway, you know, I might have just uh, found myself a uh, <laughs> spot where I can put me toe into the uh, to the market and sort of, you know, outdo uh, the competition without having to, uh, you know, without it being as hard as I would have thought.